Hey guys, we're here at DR headquarters in Brunswick, Ohio. Uh, we've got Keith from Independent Motorsports. He's come up here for a dealer training day. We're going to teach him how to assemble the unit, how to break in the unit, and then we're going to teach him all the features and how to sell the product. Keith, thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Okay, so what we're going to do is we already started out, we unbox the ATV, which is really simple. But as you look through the ATV, the first thing you want to do is look for shipping damage. And we have a complete video that explains how to look for shipping damage. You're supposed to do this when the ATV gets delivered. So what we've done is we've popped the ATV apart, and now we're looking for the all important bolt box. We have all your wheels, we've got the fender wells, and we're gonna start assembling the product. I suggest that you leave this plastic on as long as possible to avoid any kind of scratches that may occur during the assembly process. Because you want this thing out on the floor looking pristine. <laughs> What you're gonna get in this box is the battery, the silencer, it already has the screws in it and the thing, the owner's manual, a safety video, and maybe a CDI. It's only in a few units. Then you're gonna get the nuts and bolts, bags, which has everything you're gonna need to assemble the unit. It's got your nuts, your big washers, the huge axle washers and everything's pretty much separated. Lug nuts. Cut the zip ties. Why are we going to cut the zip ties? <laughs> to get the axle in. Right, because it's splined and it's going through bearings and everything has to be lined up perfectly. All right, so we have the axle in. Uh, sometimes you may need uh, some help with uh, a mallet or some type of hitting device. Basically what you need to do is, uh, these are splined, and when you thread the axle in, you need to make sure that the splines are lined uh, while pushing the axle in and pushing the sprocket uh, this way. You can slowly kind of wiggle the uh, axle in, and once uh, it's tight, this will be flush, and this will be all the way to the uh, rear carrier here. And then you'll be putting your nut, a washer in the middle, and then another nut, and then tightening that down. And we'll... Everything you need to put together is in this package. And what he was talking about for the rear is we have a big nut, a wave washer, and another nut. And what, how you do this is a critical part of the, putting the ATV together. Take this nut and you run it down all the way okay and you only put about eight pounds of torque and since i'm an expert at this <laughs> i can instantly know where eight pounds is but it's only about eight pounds of torque because what we're trying to do here is set it up so there's a bearing here there's a bearing here and if you put too much cross pressure on the bearings those bearings aren't designed for that what you're going to do is destroy the bearing so you just want it tight so it doesn't flow back and forth, but you don't want a lot of pressure pushing in on the bearings because the bearings aren't designed to be pushed in on their strongest points up and down. And we have the wave washer. And then I'm gonna run this down. Now, I'm gonna get two wrenches. I'm gonna put one on this side and one on this side. I'm gonna bring it up to 180 pounds of torque. Okay, because that's what's gonna hold the axle. And again, you want it to be able to spin. That's why you're not putting side pressure on it to ruin the bearings. Otherwise, you'll burn through some bearings pretty quick. Yeah, a trick to uh, hold from the thing to stop spinning. Uh, have another person hold a foot brake. Yes, that's true. The foot brake's over on this side, Keith. So I'm gonna get a nut, I'm gonna get a wrench in a minute, and then we're gonna turn the wrenches against each other. We're not just gonna run it in. Okay, I just opened the rear tire package, and uh, bolt package. What we have is the big washers, and they hold the rubber covers on. The two nuts that have cotter pins, and all this comes in the same package. Now, if you want to look at the tires here, they're directional. This direction goes forward, and it might it says rotation, direction of rotation right here. So basically, this is the right hand side one and that one there that Keith is holding is the left hand side. So we're going to put them on. And they're threaded. They're threaded. I'm going to hand Keith 
a washer. And for and that uh, axle nut, how much pounds of torque do you need on those uh, two nuts there for the axles? We go about 80 pounds. Yeah, it's not... On the inner nuts here? Oh, on the inner nuts, I'm sorry, that's 180 pounds of torque. Okay. okay. And for the outer ones, basically, it's really important that you have the cotter pin hole lined up so you can put the cotter pin through and then bend it. But I'm going to torque it down in a second, and then we're going to go from there. I'm going to take my snap on out. I'm going to tack it. This is preset torque. And it looks like it's perfectly lined up. And I'll never be able to do that again. <laughs> there you go. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to bend this cotter pin out of the way. And Tighten this up. There we go. I like to squeeze them to get them tight to the bolt uh, when I can. Because what we're going to do is we're going to insert this rubber plug and it actually clicks on to the back of that washer. Hey Keith, how we doing over here? Pretty good. I just didn't get the hole lined up just right yet. Yeah, there you go. It, it's just a little too tight. So I'm just going to tap it in reverse. And that should line it up. Maybe one more time. Like I said, it's important to get it lined up. And sometimes it's easier to get it tighter than it is using it to get the right spot. There we go. Now we've got the cotter pin through, and we'll do the same thing over this side. We're gonna bend this back, and you have the rubber cap, right? Here it is, and we're gonna put it on. Good thing. Okay, for your tire pressures, you wanna look at your warning sticker. Front is 2.2 PSI, rear is 2.9 uh, PSI. And underneath the seat, with every toolbox, you get a low pressure gauge so you can make sure it's 100% correct. Alright, so once your tires are inflated, you have the rear tires inflated, and now the fronts are inflated and they're not square. And we check the tire pressure to make sure it matched the sticker that is on the ATV, and if you ever have any questions, it also is inside the owner's manual. Alright, so Keith, what do you have here? The shock reservoir. Right, and what you can adjust the rebound in that shock reservoir. It has a dial gauge, it's really sensitive. Um, it works extremely well. These are one of the best shocks you can get on a mini ATV without spending thousands and thousands of dollars for aftermarket shocks. Yeah, they're filled with nitrogen. And you simply, it comes with the mount. The chrome mount has a rubber uh, sleeve to protect it, so it still looks all nice and pretty. And the bolts are already in the chassis here. So he's mounting the reservoir and since the clamp is brand new, it's gonna give you some resistance because it's gonna to wanna to open up. So you really need to clamp it closed and then put this, run the bolts in. Just bring it all the way in the right stop it. Perfect. There you go, he's got it set up. And that's your finished reservoir. So we've removed our silencer from the package. Nice looking faux carbon fiber. It already has the bolts inside, the Allens, and if you look inside, this is the US spark arrester. So as you build it, you'll know exactly where the spark arrester is mounted and stored because you need to clean that at least every two weeks, every three weeks, maybe more with heavy use. If you use good oil, uh, it will clog up, and if you use bad oil, it's going to clog up. Okay, you know, you see this manufacturer model DRX2 screen type? This is all the information you ever need to go into a national park that requires spark arrester. All you need to do is see that. We're registered with the United States uh, Forestry Service, so you can ride our vehicle anywhere in the woods. Did you know that?
No, I didn't. See? I did not. Yeah, so it, it's legal. And if you go into the, you know, if someone wants to ride in the state forest, they'll see this and we're registered and they have a list. They manufacture DRR model DRX2 screen type. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. We do our homework. All right, so once you have all the bolts uh, connected here, you uh, have the rubber. This is a 12, that's a 14. The Allens here, you can uh, use a, like a little gun like this uh, to put them on. It'll be a little easier for the two bottom. The top one, you're gonna need to use a, uh, a Allen uh, and uh, get that all tight. Have the gasket. Well, first you have the uh, gasket, then you have the uh, screen and then you're gonna use an allen like this for the top and just kind of tighten it up and once it's all tight uh, that's good now when you're doing this you want to make sure that the pipe hasn't twisted because it's held on by two springs up front and you want to make sure that there's air gap in between the battery box and the pipe and if there isn't you can just simply twist it because again it's held on by two springs up front on the head pipe and if you don't it's gonna melt the battery box so make sure there's air gap in there. Yeah. And we're gonna talk about this uh, silencer piece real quick. Again, we're, what we're gonna do is, uh, the silencer has a downspout basically that points down so it doesn't shoot up smoke or anything else, sparks in the face of riders behind it. But the downside to the downpipe is that it actually sticks out past the grab bar. And a lot of people like to tip their ATV on the rear uh, grab bar when they're working on it or when they're uh, transporting it. You can't do that with this one because what will happen is as you ride it's going to push and break these rivets free and it'll ruin the silencer. I'm going to put this up as comparison. This is basically would be would be the ground level and as you see the silencer would be hitting first and not the grab bar. This is just an example so you can see it. Now you can cut it off if you'd like. However, we don't recommend that because it's, there's a design reason for that. If you have to tip it on its back, get a block of wood like this and put it on the ground. But don't transport it on the rear end standing up. It tells you not to do it in the owner's manual and we're kind of telling you to make sure you don't do it now because you will ruin this silencer. Okay, the bolt kit for the A-arms and the spindles is all together here. It's in one package, so now we're going to open up this new bolt kit and we're going to put on the shocks, we're going to put on the A-arms, and we're going to tighten up the steering assembly. All right, so we have our bolts here. The two bigger ones with the nuts are for the lower A-arms. Um, these ones are for the shock, this one here, the short one. These two ones that do not have nuts on them are for the upper, and then this uh, little castle nut is for the tie rod, the tie rod end. Now, trick number one, in order to get to the lower A-arm bolts, you've got to undo the top two screws on the radiator, and uh, Keith, if you want to do that side over there, undo the top two screws. And then you actually pull up on the radiator, and we'll make it uh, give you clearance, and then you can uh, feed the bolt through. It's easier if you use a quarter inch socket wrench, but we're using a 3 8 because we just want to have fun. Makes it more challenging. Now there's two bolts, one on either side that hold the front body plastic on, so we can get just a little bit of lift that we need. And then you gotta remember to take the gas cap off as well. To lift that plastic. The radiator cap. Okay. The radiator is all one piece. It's solid, it's not gonna leak anything. And uh, as we come over, there's a water pump on the same side here. This water pump system is completely closed. The water pump does not go into the engine here. So if you have to remove the water pump, uh, it won't leak any liquid. There's just three bolts that hold it in. All right, so once you have the front lifted, uh, you could have a glove in between, which lifts it up to help you put this in. You wanna put the uh, shock in first, which will help support this whole uh, dual arm assembly and then uh, you can start feeding in the uh, lower and then you can do the upper. So all these uh, bolts uh, 
you're gonna have the bolt actually go in like this and have the nuts on the inside. Um, you can't have it this way because there's not enough clearance back here uh, to actually feed it through. Uh, you need to have the radiator removed um, to feed the actual bolt through the hole. And if you can't feed it through like it's stuck here, like right at the edge, you just tap it and it'll just pop right in. Also with the uppers, you're gonna be uh, using the smaller ones in. There's nuts welded to the other side. And same thing for the other one. I'm gonna use safety wire instead of uh, a cotter pin because we do it's so we do on all the race bikes. And it's eight pounds of torque uh, for the castle nut. So you squeeze these together and you pull this down. See how it locked? Mm -hmm. And they go like this. Oh, it, sweet! Isn't that cool? That is awesome. Come in here, you unclip it, and you cut it. And then you make it look pretty. That's, that's Isn't that neat. Okay guys, everything's done. We use safety wire on these ends here because uh, we like to do it because it looks cool and it's just as strong. Now if you look at the bottom of the shock over here, you have fast and slow rebound. You've got double nuts in here to adjust the preload tension. It's a two, dual rate spring. And then you have your cushion your compression rate up top there. So the shocks are three-way adjustable. They're nitrogen filled. And then now, since we had to remove the radiator, we're gonna get those little bolts in. You can see it right there. And this time we're gonna use the proper tool. It's a smaller socket with a eighth inch driver. And we're gonna put these back in and then we're gonna put the uh, body panel back on too. We're putting the uh, front tires on and I just want to highlight one of the changes that we've made uh, to the DRR. One, we, our steel rims are pretty cool. They have that little design in there that makes them cool. But we moved to a different tire. It's an AT21. It's a Kenda Claw. And the reason we moved away from the other tire was these tires are softer. The knobbies are softer. So in a motocross situation, it's going to give you more grip clay it's going to give you more grip so this tire has a lot more grip okay again we they come with the standard steel wheels but there is an optional aluminum rolled edge 160 rim that you can get these will save you weight and they look good too and the rear is way okay so these rims are 10 by five and a half the bolt patterns for 144 so once everything's uh, tightened up, you can put the front wheels on. Each one has four lugs. You can use a snap-on or a uh, torque wrench to put that on. And uh, now we're going to put the uh, front bumper on. We have uh, basically a, a bolt package here. Um, you have the smaller ones for the uh, top, the silver ones, and then the... Uh, brownish darker ones are the lower one so you want to kind of put the uh, top uh, part in first it might rub a little bit on the uh, plastic that's okay and then uh, put the uh, bottom bolts in and then put loosely. the uh, top bolts in loosely, loosely. and then once loosely. everything is uh, fitted up loosely then you can tighten it so Mike is now installing the handlebar and it comes completely assembled, one unit ready to go. All you have to do is put these Allen screws in. Once the Allen screws are in, you need to put the additional cover that comes along here, along with it, over these, and then you'll cover across the bar pit. And the easiest way to align it, just sit on it and put your hands on it to get the right uh, angle. So now we're gonna torque it down. Our wrench is actually preset to the correct torque. Okay, now Mike has installed the handlebar pad, and now he's installing the pad that goes underneath the handlebar. It just Velcro's on either side. What we're going to do is we're going to install the uh, foot well because it's important, and you're going to get four rubber washers. 
And where these go is right here, 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 and here, okay? Now what we normally do here is we take some gasket sealant or some chewing gum, <laughs> only kidding, but anything <coughs> that's gonna hold it in place because you actually have to slit, slide this in without knocking those rubber washers left or right and it is a pain in the butt. I have uh, this all tightened up now and you wanna take your uh, bolts to the washer. You wanna start from the inside right here and then work your way out, loosely putting in each one and then going back and retightening it. Um, if you start here and work your way in from the outside in, this last one will be almost impossible to get in. But if you go uh, on the inside out, you can get them in. And the flat side goes in, touching the metal, and then you have the back side here. And then on these ones, I usually put them on the outside, but they can also go up too, depending on how the plastic is.